Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we continue with areas using integration. In the last video, we saw that the area under the curve y equal to f of x provided f of x is positive is given by the formula integral x equal to a to b y dx where x equal to a and x equal to b are the boundary values and we get the area below the curve and above the axis okay and if the curve is negative i mean if the function is function gives negative values that means if the curve goes below the x axis then all you have to do is use the same formula but put modulus so that the area value remains positive now the third and the most important case a little bit of the curve is above the axis and little bit of curve is below the axis and in such cases if you want the area between x equal to a and x equal to b what you do is you find you use the same formula integral y dx uh, whenever the curve stays above the x-axis and whenever the curve stays below the x-axis you use the formula with modulus and finally you add all these parts and you get the total area and with that small revision let's continue with areas okay in today's video uh, we are going to find the area of two or three very important curves okay the first one asteroid um, this has been repeated in many many question papers i just checked the past year question papers and in many question papers they have asked to find area of the asteroid using integration but i'm sure that some of you might be not that familiar with the curve asteroid so i wanted to note these things the equation of asteroid is x to the power 2 by 3 plus y to the power 2 by 3 equal to a to the power 2 by 3 and the graph looks like this should be the same length everywhere look at this this is x equal to a and this is the origin and this height is also same this is a unit so this will be y coordinate will be a and it's a symmetric figure that means if you find the area here all you have to do is multiply by 4 and you get the total area and one more thing the parametric form this is the cartesian equation cartesian equation means equation in x and y and the parametric form is x is equal to a cos cube theta and y is equal to a sin cube theta um, for some students who do not know the meaning of parametric form uh, i'll give you a basic concept from circles so look at this this is the equation of circle which you learned in class 11 and the parametric form which i'll explain in a minute of this circle is x is equal to 2 cos theta and y is equal to uh, 2 sin theta okay the first thing i want you to do is imagine this to be a coordinate okay and now look at this x and y are connected by the help of a third variable in the cartesian form there is no third variable they have given the connection between x and y directly and that means uh, you can choose points like 2 comma 0 which will balance the equation 2 square plus 0 square equal to 4 you can choose minus 2 0 you can choose 0 comma 2 you can choose 0 comma minus 2 uh, you can choose root 2 comma root 2 because root 2 the whole square plus root 2 the whole square will be 4 you can just minus root. there are millions of points and once you plot all the points you are going to get the circle with center origin and radius 2 so that is how the cartesian equation works but here uh, choosing those points becomes very easy because you are using a third variable look at this what we do here is we have to choose the points with the help of this equation if i put x equal to 2 i get the value y equal to 0 if I put y equal to 0, I get the value x equal to plus or minus 2. So that's why I got two values. Like that, like that, like that, like that, I can generate. I will put x equal to 1. So what I get is y is equal to plus or minus root 3. So you plot all the points and you get the circle. So that's the logic in Cartesian equation. 
Now in parametric equation, things are more easier because it is already in the form of a coordinate. And this is the x value and this is the y value. And it depends on a third variable. Now look at this. By putting values for the third variable, for example in the case of a circle, I will put 0 degree. When I put 0 degree, I get 2 cos 0, 2 sin 0, which is 2 comma 0. Because cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is. Now if I put theta equal to 90 degree, I get 2 cos 90, 2 sin 90, which gives me another point 0 comma 2. And I can put 30 degree, 20 degree, 10 degree, 1 degree, 2 degree, whatever I want, I will put from 0 to 2 pi. And this gives me infinite number of points. And again, if I plot, I get the same circle. So this is the logic behind parametric form. So look at this. In many situations, parametric form will be very easy to handle. Even in the last video, we, we found the area of the circle using Cartesian form. But you can try it with the parametric form. Once you watch this video, you will get that idea by yourself. Use the parametric form. Uh, finding area will be very easier than using the Cartesian form. Anyway, uh, let's move ahead. So the first question, find the area of the asteroid. So what you do is you draw a rough picture. I have the rough picture over here. And I'm going to write area is equal to or the required area or the total area, whatever, is equal to 4 times area in first quadrant. So the total area is given by 4 times area in the first quadrant. And that will be 4 times integral x equal to 0 to a y dx. Because I told you as long as the curve is above the x-axis, the formula will be integral y dx. And I require to find the area from x equal to 0 because at the origin x will be 0. And at this point x is equal to a. So this is the required area. Now look at this. If you try to find y from here, it will be a mess. I'm not saying you won't be able to do it and you will be able to evaluate the integral with the help of our beta gamma integrals. Uh, you will get uh, a to the power 2 by 3 minus x to the power 2 by 3, the whole to the power 3 by 2, etc. So I, I don't want to uh, deal with this. So what I do is I go for the simpler version, the parametric form. So the advantage of parametric form is uh, we already have the y value. What is the y value? Yeah, a sine cube theta. And next, we can find the dx value just by finding the differential of this. So things are easier in the parametric form compared to the Cartesian form. So let's start. Uh, I, I, I told you we already have y. So I'm going to find our dx. So we have x is equal to a cos theta into cos theta into cos theta that is cos cube theta or cos theta the whole cube. I, wrote, I like to write in this form so that differentiation becomes very easy. By the way, what's the derivative of x cube? Isn't it 3x square? Yeah. So I am going to write dx is equal to, it looks like something cube. So we get 3 into cos theta the whole square times, because we are going to apply chain rule, function of a function times minus sin theta d theta. So here we go, we get dx, the value of dx. Now one more thing, this limit belongs to x and we need the value of the parameter. So we have to change x in terms of theta. So look at this, um, cos cube theta is equal to x by a. So cos theta is equal to cube root of x by a. So that theta will be cos inverse cube root of x by a. Now I am going to plug in the lower value. Yeah, If x equal to 0, theta will be cos inverse 0 by a. That is cos inverse 0. And that is cos inverse 0 means pi by 2. And then it's pi by 2. And then if x equal to a, the upper limit, theta will be cos inverse a by a 1, that is 0. So that's it. Uh, let's move ahead. 4 times 
theta is equal to pi by 2 to 0. What should I do instead of y? I should use this value. And that is a sin cube theta. And instead of dx, I have the values here. It is a 3 cos theta, the whole square, times minus sin theta d theta. So look at this, I can see one minus here. So I'm going to play with the limits. In properties, you have already learned that when you flip the limits, when you make the upper limit lower and the lower limit upper, um, the integral will become negative. But we already have a negative, so we end up with positive. Now a into a, that is a square, and this 3 comes outside, so we get 3 times 4, that will be 12 later, and sine to the power 4 theta, and cos square theta, d theta. Okay, I'm sure um, you know how to handle this with the help of beta gamma function, but uh, I'm making this video for all type of students, so there may be some weak students who might need a little bit extra help. So for such students, I'll recommend you to watch this part. Others can skip and move ahead to the next question. So look at this. In case you don't know beta gamma integrals, this will be perfect for you. So look at this. Suppose you have integral sine to the power p theta cos to the power q theta d theta. The best way to manipulate this or the best way to evaluate this is convert it into beta function. And it will be beta p plus 1 by 2, q plus 1 by 2. And you have to use another result. Beta mn is nothing but gamma. So you get gamma m gamma n by gamma m plus n. In some books, they make you by heart uh, directly to gamma. I don't like that. It's up to you. It's a personal choice. Anyway, I love to convert to beta and beta to gamma. Okay, let's do that first and come back for the shortcut. Okay, so we have 3 into 4, 12, 12a square times, I told you, the whole thing will be reduced into beta integral, 1 by 2 beta. What is 4 plus 1? 5 by 2. What about 2 plus 1? 3 by 2. Okay. So I think you understood up to this. And I told you beta function will become, these two will get cancelled. Beta function can be changed into gamma. So this becomes gamma 5 by 2, gamma 3 by 2 by, add them. What is 5 plus 3? 8. 8 by 2, 4. Gamma 4. Okay, now... Once more, we are going to learn how to evaluate that gamma values. So look at this, gamma n is actually n minus 1 gamma n minus 1. In the case of integers, it's very easy to evaluate. It will be n minus 1 factorial. So gamma 10 will be 9 factorial. Gamma 100 will be 99 factorial. Gamma 10 will be yeah, 9 factorial. Gamma 7 will be 6 factorial, etc, etc. Okay, now you need to learn how to evaluate gamma when you have fractions with 2. There is a shortcut. What is 9 by 2 minus 1? Actually, that is 7 by 2. And then again decrease 1. 5 by 2. Again decrease 1. Again decrease 1. And every time you will reach 1 by 2. That is guaranteed because you have a fraction with denominator 2 and when you reach here you just put root pi now if you have gamma 11 by 2 let's give it a try what is 11 by 2 minus 1 9 by 2 yeah 7 by 2 5 by 2 3 by 2 1 by 2 when you reach 1 by 2 yeah root pi that's it now it'll be just like any student uh, who knows uh, what you call beta gamma function. So tell me what happens to the numerator? Yeah, 3 by 2, 1 by 2, root pi. What happens to gamma 3 by 2? 1 by 2, root pi. The whole divided by, it's an integer. So it will be 3 factorial. 
now take a calculator or simplify use any method you like uh, the final answer is 3 by 8 pi a square so that's the area of a asteroid okay so let's move ahead the next question is find the area of the hypocycloid look at this uh, hypocycloid is something like generalized version of the asteroid you have to imagine a circle and an ellipse so circle is a special case of the ellipse or the generalization of the circle is the ellipse likewise asteroid and hypocycloid are like circle and ellipse so it's the same picture but it can be a little bit pulled and not that good in drawing over here okay i'll give you the equation first x to the power 2 by 3 by a to the power 2 by 3 plus y to the power 2 by 3 by yeah b to the power 2 by 3 equal to 1 and the parametric form is x is equal to a cos cube theta like i told you uh, if you know the parametric form integration becomes very simple in many cases and i'll strongly recommend uh, you try to find the area of circle and ellipse with the help of this parametric form uh, you'll find it more easier and this is b sin cube theta okay and the picture looks something like okay let's say this is uh, let's say this is a and let's say this is b so see the height need not be same so the graph is the same it goes like this and the same thing here and the same thing here here and it's a symmetric one so if you find the area in one quadrant it will be reflected everywhere anyway i'll give you the introduction and then you can do the rest so as always we have the parametric form we have the curve now time to write total area or the required area equal to four times area in the first quadrant and area is nothing but integration integral y dx as long as the curve stays above the x-axis by the way one more thing one very important thing uh, earlier i didn't tell you so that you don't get confused suppose uh, you have a function y equal to f of x and we can invert it and write x equal to g of y and let's say you're interested in the area with respect to the y-axis let's say this is y equal to a and y equal to b and you want this much area and it is given by integral x dy where you plug in the limits of y and you find x from the relation this can also be applied in many cases y dx so look at this we have the value of y dx you can find from here and x varies from 0 to a which you have to convert it into theta and theta will come from pi by 2 to 0 like in the previous problem and try this now and in the comment session you can tell me whether you uh, found the answer or not anyway the answer is 3 by 8 pi a b so this is the answer 3 by 8 pi a b okay so i'm going to wind up the video right now so i'll be back with another video in which we will learn the area of cycloid that's very important in your exam and i'll teach you how to evaluate area in polar coordinate system and as always if you like the video please like share and subscribe with your friends and i'll be back soon so till then my friends bye